Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast with Michael Lafito, where top luxury agents reveal their best practices, plus interviews with real estate industry influencers, thought leaders, and luxury marketing experts. You'll come away from each episode with new strategies and tactics to dominate high-end homes in any market. And now for the latest episode of Luxury Listing Specialist, here's your host, luxury real estate expert, coach, and trainer, Michael Lafito. Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specials podcast. You're in the right place if you're looking to work smarter, not harder, although it's not easy. If you're looking to work smarter, not harder, and increase your average sale price, you're in the right spot, whether you're a team leader, a broker owner, or an individual agent, whether you're a seasoned veteran or a newbie agent with a large brokerage or an independent. And I'm your host. My name is Michael Lafito, and uh, you are here, and we have an exciting guest. But before I introduce our guest, if you have any questions about today's podcast or you, you want to suggest uh, a different topic or you have a question on something we've covered on other podcasts, shoot me an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. Um, Michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. And oh, by the way, if you are getting value from this podcast, please leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. We don't have enough reviews out there, although we get a lot of people telling us, oh, I heard your podcast, I heard this. Again, please don't keep us a secret. I appreciate it. And if you have our book, make sure you leave us a review on Amazon. Again, our book, Luxury Listing Specialist. All right, let's get right into today's episode. I want to introduce uh, my guest and give you a little background. Uh, we were talking a little bit before uh, we, we started this recording on when we first met, and I believe we both met at a Century 21 National Conference down in New Orleans. I presented down there. So did so did John, and uh, and we've stayed in communication for you know eight eight years since then. And I love what he's doing. He comes from a place of authenticity, and uh, he's got a uh, a great heart, and he's a, he's a he's a stand up guy. I got John Cheplack here. John, you there? I'm here, buddy. Pleasure so to be here John, with you. John, it's a pleasure to have you. You, you coach uh, broker owners, team leaders on recruiting, on retention. You're also a one-on-one -on -one coach for some um, major top agents and team leaders and, and CEOs in and outside of the industry. And uh, you're doing some amazing things. I just ran, at, ran into you at the Inman Conference in, in July, and uh, you were sharing with me your, your, your keynote speaking schedule, and you're all over the place uh, as far as travel. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I really appreciate uh, what you're doing for the uh, industry and uh, raising the bar is something I always challenge agents to continue to do that. And uh, you are doing just that. So first off, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you. Ah, it's a privilege. Thanks so much for inviting me on and hope I can contribute some value to your great podcast here. Well, you you will. I know it. So the first thing we wanted to talk about, we're going to cover two topics today. The first thing is overcoming setbacks, uh, whether that be personally, whether it be business, whether it be in your marriage, physical setbacks, whatever it might be. And then we'll end the second half of the podcast talking about, uh, like Tony Robbins says, success leaves clues. So, you know, you're coaching a lot of uh, producers and uh, CEOs and, and love to dive in a little bit of that and what you see some uh, common commonalities are what they're doing and and uh, you know some of the tips and suggestions you have for the listeners as far as that are repeatable and and, and, and that, that blueprint so um, so from a from a setback standpoint going to the first part of uh, today's show you know you you're, you're hearing from different perspectives experienced agents CEOs uh, you know, large producing agents, I'm talking 100, 200, 300 million dollar plus producers as far as sales volume is concerned. And, um, and then even your, yourself personally, we all overcome different kinds of setbacks. And you shared with me um, in the past some setbacks that you've had. Mm -hmm. And I've always admired uh, the fact that uh, you know, you, you, you're open about it, but you didn't obviously dwell on it. It was a learning experience, and you're making the world a better place um, because of that, John. And so um, do you have anything to add as far as, um, you know, either personally or some commonalities you see from individuals that are s successful today because of perhaps a, a major setback they had previously in their life? 
Sure. I, th- I think that, uh, and, I, and I love going here because uh, we're in an industry and whether it's entrepreneurship or someone that's a CEO of a corporate America company or, or, or anything like that, you know, we're so programmed into this space of strategies and tactics and sales messages and, you know, all the, the science of business. And it's actually an impediment to most people because the most important part of business is the art. And I don't care what type of business you're in. The bottom line is we're in the human resource, human development, human attraction, human behavior business. And so when you when you take a look at that, well, let's take a look at uh, human beings. We're all flawed. And, 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 and so it doesn't matter how perfect the model is or the form or structure. There's so many great books that you can read on how to run a business. You know, a principal taught to me many years ago by my mentor was everything that's going on privately will show up publicly. And so what, what, what I've found is that, uh, and, you know, I'm not saying it's good or bad. It's just my observation in, in our industry and, and anything and being able to coach a lot now outside our industry, we always think that the solution or we've been trained or programmed or I can just watch and observe it is we think that more training or more information is going to solve something. In other words, putting more layers on top of something or putting more layers on top of people. And what it does is it paralyzes people. It overwhelms people when the real moment of productivity and growth takes place when we go layers deeper within human beings. And so if you look real closely at the people that have risen to super high levels, we've all had an experience. We've all had a moment. Uh, I would liken it to, and not extreme, but we've all had a drama or a trauma in, in, in our lifetime, whether it's in childhood or whether it's a um, in our adult life, in whether it's divorces, partnership breakups, you know, just anything personally challenged with, with family members. And, and so what I've found is that the people that have performed at the highest level, number one, highly competent and committed, but they, they have taken a moment, some point in time, if you sit down with most of them, and it's that moment of impact and not a positive impact, but one that's caused pain, um, one that then from that pain creates fear going forward. They have this magical piece inside them of the ability to transmute fear or doubt or low self-worth, the normal things that everyone has and transmute it into motivation. So, um, you know, we've, we've all got our stuff and that's the piece is, is whereas I would say 95 to 97% of our human population is paralyzed by fear and they hold on to a story. Um, the guys performers had a moment that, um, they saw as a catalyst. And it was their history that they use as a contrast to see there is better. And based on that, that knowing, they've used the experiences as, as, a, as a space to catapult them into other levers and, and, and break through doorways of fear. That, I would say, is a common theme because what would shock most people. And I'm real fortunate. I mean, I get to talk to you know, about 80 people now a week on coaching calls. Man, they're, and, and me too, all of us, we're all the same. Is, is their self-doubt, their fears, their concerns, all the things. They've got it too, but they've just decided to look at it in a different way. You know, the one thing that I say to people, and some don't like it, but feelings are a choice. Feelings are a choice, and based on the experiences that are happening, what do you choose to do? How do you choose to feel? Because 
every outcome really starts with how we feel, Mike. So yes, they've, it's overcoming. <clears throat> and, and even it can happen too. You know, I look at my career was really successful. And then I hit some moments in my life that I've been very transparent about, uh, um, with, you know, successful as an agent, the branch manager, then executive and battle with alcoholism the whole time until fortunately, there was a moment where, and, and I think it's where it really turned the corner for me in working with other people, not that I work with a bunch of alcoholics, um, sure, sure. but just a moment, my, my drama, my trauma, um, I had to like go all in, double down on my personal development. And an interesting thing happened when I went there and like pushed business to the side. Sure, I had skill sets and, and experiences. When I doubled down in that space, an interesting thing happened with my business. It just, I mean, it, it went beyond and continues to my wildest dreams. And so um, knowing that and trusting that other people have their experiences um, a, yeah, they have experiences and challenges. B, me staying true to it and, and, and serving the human being first and their willingness to walk through it. Um, so it, it's a reality, and that's where the solution is in business growth. It really is, man. Well, I appreciate you sharing that, uh, you know, both personally as well as your experience coaching people. You know, the, the mindset, we talk about it. Matter of fact, it's it's really our, our, it's our second module in our certification. It's, we talk about building your foundation, and, and that really stems around the mindset. You talked about fear. I use the term limiting beliefs. We all have them. And uh, you reference feelings are a choice. And, you know, before you and I got on this call, you know, we were catching up a little bit and and you talked about how you're grateful and i think you know grateful was it's such a i think that encompasses kind of where you're at with things right i mean i know you're a competitor and i know you want to get better and, and you want to make your your 80 coaching clients a week better but on the same token appreciating what you have um, you know is is part of being grateful um content isn't a bad thing uh, many times we hear the word contentment as being totally happy happy with where you're at and and you're not motivated you don't want to get better but that that isn't uh, that isn't the case so uh, really appreciate um, you know you sharing some of those common denominators that that uh, many people have um, when they have some kind of setback whether it be personal physical uh, you know I tell people all the time that the windshield is 50 times larger than that rear view mirror and I can't even say the word rear view mirror syndrome three times fast but too many people have rear view mirror syndrome and they keep looking back and that back you know that rear view mirror and looking back the what ifs the what ifs and the what ifs and they'll they'll paralyze you well it will and and i like the word you brought up uh, grateful and then we hear the lessons in gratitude lists and and um a lot of times think you know you're just a polarizing guy and go to the opposite well i i, I, I go to the fact that everything has its duality. And so I look at things from both perspectives. So the first part is many people think that gratitude and gratefulness is a, is a, is a feeling. And uh, well, sure it is, but actually it's an action word. Um, and, and that's one of the pieces that I look at personally. And as I, as I work with other people is um, that in case you're grateful, I'll know that you're grateful based on the actions that you take today that demonstrate that. You can write down a list of what you're grateful for. You know, people, I'm grateful for my health. Okay. And, and everyone has varying degrees. Certainly everyone knows, not everyone, but fitness and, and nutrition is important to me. Um, doesn't mean that someone needs to be at my level, but you can look at general habits of our society. My goodness. Um, uh, I think that he's saying obesity is the number two killer in, in the U.S. Hmm. Um, and, and people will we have over 50% obesity rate. And, and, and I have no judgment to it. It's a struggle that people have. It's a, it's, it's a struggle that it's a struggle I had with alcoholism. But hmm. um, it, it's, a, it's a matter of taking um, the things we're taught, such as gratitude, and then, and then going underneath it and saying, okay, 
how can I demonstrate that today? Not just feel it, because feelings are great, but now it's taking that feeling and putting it into action. So that's number one. And a good duality. I love, <clears throat> I think it's great you brought up the the um, the rear rear view mirror versus versus the windshield. I think that, um, uh, and it's not, it's, you know, not uh, um, disagreeing with what you're saying at all, um, just kind of expanding on it. Sure. Is that our, our future's in our past, actually. Our future's in our past. And what you alluded to, which is, makes total sense, is, is many people sit in that past or they haven't accepted it or they reject it. And so when you reject it and you resist it, well, it, you're rejecting yourself. It's a part of you. What happens, and this is a really neat thing in the personal development space, this is where the breakthroughs come through. I mean, you look at, you look at video right now and how important it is yet and how long we've been hearing about it, yet the low percentage of people using it in our industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing. And, mm -hmm. and you know what? Mike, it's, it's not about knowing how to push selfie mode. It's not about knowing how to push the red video button. It's about worrying about what people think about us. It's right. about worrying uh, uh, about acceptance. And so that's a personal development thing. It's not a video thing. That's what's so interesting. So so where, where, where the rear view mirror is your friend is that when you can, as we talked in the beginning, when you can look at the experiences, the moments personally and professionally, and actually embrace them as a, as a classroom, as a catalyst, or as a contrast, and at the same time have a vision going forward, those two together are massive. Great gratitude as an action word. Okay, I wrote my gratitude list down. How am I going to demonstrate that today? I'm grateful for my career. And then carrying an energy forward with you daily, whereas, okay, I had that gratitude. What am I doing? You know, I'm in a space. It's, um, oh, I guess it was, and I always love to give attribution, but it was one of the, 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 um, the gurus, uh, and he had said, uh, a spiritual guru, and he was talking about people, you know, I want my dream car. And if I get my dream car, it's going to be amazing. And so, so then someone's got their dream car, but now they're sitting in LA traffic and they're miserable. And he's like, but wait a minute, you're in your dream car. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, I mean, just, just those subtle things that, 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 that I grab and, and, and strive to pay attention to. Goodness, I, I have multiple coaches because I need another pair of eyes keeping myself into the space I'm in because we all revert back to form or, our old behaviors, you, you can't avoid them. You can't reject them. You can't dismiss them. They're a part of you. It's the great analogy. And, and, and where we work with, with, with leaders that want to grow, whether they're doing good and they want to do great, doing great, they want to get at least, no, no matter where everyone's at, is, is what I share with humans is, is that uh, the brain is like a computer. And if we remember in the day, we don't see it as much anymore. But um, uh, my computer's running slow. Gosh, yeah, it's making me, uh, it's about it. bam, and then it crashes only at the worst possible time, only at the worst possible time. Well, because there was a virus running around. Well, every one of us has a virus running around, and and what happens is, you know, that that, that virus is running way in the background of the computer, and maybe you weren't paying attention or missed it, and then it crashes. Well, people don't pay attention. They try and move the virus, the drama, the trauma, the, the time they were picked on, um, the time they felt abandoned, um, any of those things. And they don't bridge the gap there. That's where the gap is. Like, and that's mm -hmm. the work. And so it's that ability to accept all the experiences that we've had because I've studied a lot of Carl Jung's work, and, and we see quotes and names that which we resist persists. Well, what's it mean? It means exactly what I just demonstrated right there. <laughs> well, th this is a perfect setup, basically, for the second part of what we're going to talk about is, you know, success leaves clues. And, and part of that is exactly that, right? When, when we do get kicked in the shins or we do have a setback, you know, what you just talked about, right? That's one of the common denominators that you probably see with the 80 people that you're coaching, uh, whether they be a CEO or a top 
you know, top agent. What, what are some other uh, common de- denominators that you see with your top producing team leaders, agents, brokers, CEOs, um, you know, from coaching them? Sometimes they say teacher mm-hmm. learns best. I mean, what, what are you mm-hmm. learning uh, mm-hmm. from uh, some of the, these top people you're coaching? Sure. Um, their two greatest skills that either they have or just obsessed with evolving empathy and their emotional maturity. Sure. So uh, say that one more time. Empathy and evolving their emotional maturity because their blind spot is the most elite performers. Um, had the conversation twice today. I started at 4 a.m. on my coaching calls <clears throat> and was reminding them of their blind spot that the people you lead, we, we think unconsciously that the people we lead hear, listen, process, think, and act the same way we do. <laughs> That's the number one blind spot of leaders. And it's just like marketing, and I'm talking to one of the best marketers in the industry right here, and you get this. It's just like marketing. Marketing is about enrolling people. You're trying to enroll people to your program, your product, your service, the experience. Well, leaders are trying to enroll people to their vision. Well, just like in marketing, you've got to meet people where they're at. It takes empathy to do that. It takes emotional maturity to do that. Because if you don't, if you don't create this deep psychological and emotional bond with the people you lead, then what you say falls on deaf ears, except for that small percentage that's just going to make it happen either way. See, because no one's inspired by someone else's to-do list. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Self-discovery is the number one way to get a human being to make a choice, make a change, move into higher productivity. So it's 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 really focusing on, I would say, uh, and, and then recognizing and having the willingness, because I will have some people forward that have been hired performers by sheer force and terror. And when I say sheer force and terror, you know, grit, courage, and, and massive competency. I mean, everyone I coach is a lot smarter than me. Um, and it just, it's that way. But it's, it's that, that, that ability to, to recognize that, whoa, it's not about some new tactical scientific thing that's going to move it. Listen, Mike, these guys that you sit with and hang out with and are your peers, I mean, they know how to make money. Mm-hmm. They know how to make money. They know how to generate leads. They know how to convert leads. They, they are revenue-producing machines. The key piece is then really growing and expanding our ability to facilitate growth with other human beings, period. Yeah. Well, I love, you know, you talking about with other human beings. Uh, you know, I spoke at this event in June of 2018 called the Lab Code Agents event. And oh, sure, gentleman- yeah. You know those guys. They're doing some great. They have 100,000 members in their group. And there was, uh, there was a presenter there that talked about, you know, hey, we're all going to pass, pass away. And on your, on your headstone, on your gravestone, you know, of course, you're going to have the, your name and your birth date and the day you pass away. But imagine being, imagine if it said number of lives infe- affected, number of lives affected and had a number. What will your number be? And it really struck me you know, because I know, you know, you're coaching 80 people, but it's much more than. I mean, you know, one of the guys you're coaching out of Nashville, you know, he runs a large team. And, and, and do you know how many thousands of people they're helping buy and sell a property and close out chapters of their lives and open up <laughs> chapters of their lives? So it's, it's much more than those 80. For, for me, you know, people say, well, why, why do you coach and consult and speak? You know, I said, the, the thought of selling an extra 50 to 75 homes a year doesn't excite me. But, I mean, I'm impacting thousands of individuals, you know, and, and you're doing the same thing. So I'd like all of you, that's kind of what I'd like to leave this message with as far as success leaves clues is how, how does it work in each of your lives? I want you to take some time to think about on your gravestone, if it says number of lives affected and it's blank, 
What, what do you want yours to say? That's how I want to be remembered, as somebody that affected lives, that lifted others up, that was humble, was kind, and was a leader. And uh, that's one of our for- former coaches, John Smith, used to say, say that all the time. He said, be a leader, be kind, and be humble. So uh, those, are, those are some three simple tasks, but they're difficult, right? I mean, uh, when, we're, when someone cuts you off, when you're having a tough day, when you're hangry, right? You're hungry and, and you're angry. <laughs> yeah. you know, that's really uh, when the test when we're tested, uh, you know, I, I feel like that's that's the ultimate test. So, really good. We got deep today, John. I, I really appreciate all you're doing. Um, for anybody that wants, maybe their broker owner or a team leader, they're looking to recruit more, or they're interested in, in hearing more about your your coaching services. What's the best way for somebody uh, to get in, in touch with you, John? Sure. Uh, best place to go is chatblacklive dot com which is my uh, website, and then Instagram is also Chet Black Live. And right, then, I'm going to spell that for you. That's C-H-E-P-L-A-K, live, L-I-V-E dot com. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the best place to do it. And then the second, uh, I, uh, as you know, I, I'm very active on my personal Facebook page, and so hanging out there. Awesome. Awesome. We'll keep raising the bar, lifting others up, and making uh, the world a better place. Appreciate all you're doing, John. Appreciate you. Thank you for the opportunity, bud. You're welcome. And again, if you have any questions about this interview or anything else uh, that we've covered in previous podcasts, or you want more information on our services, our certification, our, our speaking, our training, etc., shoot me an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. We just launched our, uh, our, our new website. So check it out, LuxuryListingSpecialist.com, Luxury Listing Specialist. I'm your host, Michael Lafito. Keep raising the bar and prove others wrong. Have a great day. 